Hi guys, for this unit we'll be writing a description essay uh, and I'll first explain uh, how to do that and then afterwards I'll talk about the structure of the second half of this course. Now uh, the software I'm using to record this creates an index on the right hand side so if you want to jump to a particular part of the lecture you just click on the entry in the index and it will jump uh, to that part. It's like a table of contents. Okay, let's begin. The typical, uh, to write a typical description essay, you'll need to think about these elements. Uh, first, what do you want to describe, the object of description? And then, who are you describing it to? Uh, who's your reader? And then, how subjective should your description be? Should it be just figures and numbers and me measurements and colors? Or do you want to use symbolism, metaphor, storytelling, that kind of thing? Uh, after that, uh, you can start uh, thinking about the essay itself. Uh, first, how do you introduce what you want to describe to the reader? What context will you give it? Then, uh, how exactly will you describe it? Uh, what order, uh, what parts does it have, and what order will you put those parts in? And finally, uh, why is it important for the reader to read your description? Uh, and then afterwards, I'll give you some uh, example essays that you can read. Now, this is a recorded lecture, which means if I'm going too fast or there's something you don't understand, uh, you can always pause, think about it, jump back and forth. Uh, if you need to take a break, you can pause at any time. I don't care. I, I, I don't know uh, when you pause. So that's up to you. Let's look at the first element. First element, the object of description. What are you describing? What do you want to describe? What is the subject of your essay of description? Now, uh, more obviously, you can choose like a physical object and you can describe what it looks like, what it does, uh, you can describe what it means to you, how you acquired or encountered this object, uh, what you do with it, how it has changed your life, etc. But you can also describe more abstract things. You can describe a memory, a person, a moment in time, an idea, a process. And the more you think about things you can describe, the more it seems like a description essay is another kind of explanation essay. There is a subtle difference, however. In an explanation or exposition essay, the point is to make your reader understand something. But in a description essay, the point is to uh, make the reader be able to imagine what you're describing in their mind's eye. So, if you, if you uh, after reading your des description essay, uh, if you mention this thing to them, they should have a picture of it or an understanding of it in their mind. So they don't have to be able to uh, re-explain uh, it. They don't have to be able to to apply the information, but they should have a feeling of of knowing what you're talking about of being on the same page, of having a same understanding. So really, the description essay is an exercise in conveying or transmitting your thought to the reader's mind, so that you're both thinking about basically the same thing. Uh, but in fact, it, it, when you actually write a description essay, uh, the content is often very similar to an exposition or explanation essay, but the, the attitude or the emphasis or the tone uh, can be quite different. So, choose something to write about. It doesn't really matter what you choose. You could describe anything. Uh, and throughout the revision and review process, uh, your classmates and I will help you to sharpen the mental image that you want to convey to the reader. Uh, and so you don't have to worry about choosing the perfect object 
or or thing or idea or whatever just choose anything it's fine next the reader for whom are you describing this thing um, and the thing to think about for any essay of course is what does your reader already know and what does your reader not yet know before reading your essay so if you're describing something that everyone already knows about or has or uses in everyday life you don't have to spend too much time uh, describing its functions or uh, when uh, we might need to use it you can skip over the parts or you can briefly uh, it, like explain or summarize the parts very briefly that the reader already knows now of course if you're describing something very unusual or very personal then it will take more work to set up your description essay so that the reader is prepared to accept what uh, the image or the idea that you want to give the reader uh, so even if it's an unusual or personal thing that you want to describe there is always a point of connection with what the reader already knows so let's say I want to describe oh I don't know uh, my professor in, in your case that would be me uh, or professor Liang um, so if you want to describe this person of course your reader may not know uh, your professor your reader, re reader may not have even heard of your professor but your reader will already have an idea of what a professor is or should be like uh, and what a professor does and how a, a professor behaves so you can begin uh, your essay by uh, from that connection with what the reader already knows and starting from what the reader already knows then slowly branch out into giving the reader new information and new ideas uh, so you have to think about uh, whether the reader already knows about what you want to describe or how much of it the reader already knows you have to think about subjectivity how subjective should your description be and this is especially important if you're describing a, a thing or an, a process or an idea uh, if you're trying to describe like uh, the process or experience of, of uh, I don't know using an Apple watch for the first time by the way I don't have an Apple watch I've never used an Apple watch I have no idea how to use one so I'm just uh, imagining how you might want to describe this uh, but if your subject the subject of your uh, the object of your description is uh, how to use an Apple watch or the experience of using an Apple watch for the first time uh, you can think about whether you want it uh, to be an, an objective description like you know what the box looks like what it looks like after you take it out of the box what buttons it has what functions it has the specific steps you have to take to begin using the Apple watch etc or and or you can uh, think about the subjective experience uh, of using an Apple watch for the first time so what it feels like to finally have acquired this newfangled technological toy whether you spent your own money or someone gave it to you or you know you found it in the trash can or something uh, what it feels like to open it up and actually see the thing uh, what it feels like to put it on and to how strange it feels to have a computer on your wrist and how small the screen is and how you have to work to get used to that scale and how you have to learn uh, the logic of using this this Apple watch the things it can do well the things it can do but not very well the things it can do poorly uh, how over the next few days you slowly get used to the Apple watch and you slowly grow to rely on it uh, or how over the next few days you realize you don't really need to use it uh, and you leave it in at home often and you realize that oh it was just uh, a trendy new thing you wanted because it looked cool but uh, actually it doesn't do much whatever uh, and usually a good description essay will be focused more on the subjective side but uh, especially for unusual things or ideas uh, you'll want to include at least a little objective 
description so that the reader has a basic idea of what you're describing. If you only start talking about an, uh, the feeling of, an app, of acquiring an Apple Watch and going through its menu for the first time, uh, etc., uh, and your reader doesn't know what an Apple Watch is, and your reader only thinks that that thinks that the Apple Watch is basically just you know a fancy-looking watch put out by Apple instead of what it really is, which is a wristwatch computer, uh, then your reader will have a hard time understanding the experiences you're sharing and why you would feel that way about this new Apple Watch. So uh, think about how much objectivity your reader needs and how to describe something uh, subjectively. Uh, for even when you're describing a thing, uh, objective description would be like how uh, heavy is it, how big is it, the size, the weight, uh, how long does it take to, to use, things like that. And subjectively, you might think about what what does it look like, use a metaphor, or what does it make you think of, or what is the experience of using it like uh, to you, what does it evoke in your memory, things like that. Uh, once we, be we begin thinking about writing the essay proper, the first thing you should think about is the context. Now, by context, I don't mean your context. So if what you want to write about is you want to describe like the memory of your uh, 18th birthday, your context would of course be after you turn 17 you slowly realize you're about to approach 18 and as you approach your 18th birthday you think about things like uh, how, it's such a special day, how will I celebrate? Will someone surprise me? What kind of gifts will I give? What will it mean for me to finally turn 18? That's your context. But here I'm talking about the reader's context. When or how would the reader encounter or want to know about what you're describing? So if you're writing about your 18th birthday memories, then your reader's context isn't your 18th birthday. It's the reader's 18th birthday, or even the reader's idea of turning 18, the importance of the age 18 in our culture. Some, so this is how, uh, where you begin to connect your main idea with what the reader knows or expects or is able to understand at the very beginning of your essay. What context would the reader be in, uh, in first encountering or understanding what you want to describe? Next, the thing that you want to describe or the idea or the process or, or the memory or whatever uh, has to be divided into parts because you're writing an essay. You're not showing a picture, you're not bringing the object into class, you're writing an essay. And essays are made up of sentences that go from one direction to the other direction. It's a linear process, which means uh, you, you're unable to show the reader everything at once. You have to start somewhere, move through a kind of uh, middle part, and end somewhere, which means you have to divide it into parts. Now, some things have natural parts, uh, like the Apple Watch or the 18th birthday memory. The natural order uh, for that would be the order of time, chronology. Other things uh, may not have such a, an obvious order. If you wanted to describe, um, uh, I don't know, like a new light fixture, like a, like a, a smart bulb, one of those light bulbs where, you know, uh, you can turn it on or off or, or adjust the brightness using your phone, that kind of thing. Uh, where do you begin? Do you begin from the fact that it's a light bulb and the reader knows what light bulbs are? Or do you begin from the fact that you can control it remotely, like uh, you can remote control a television or an air conditioner set? Uh, so you have to choose where to begin. And from that point, follow a natural progression of the parts so that your reader is able to logically continue understanding what you're saying at each part. Um, so like for the smart bulb, you don't want to jump directly from light bulb to remote control. There are middle parts, right? So uh, you can say like, oh, you know what a light bulb is, and you know light bulbs can turn on and off. But what if you want it half on? Like, 
half bright. And what if you you feel too lazy to like get up and move across the room to adjust the light every time、uh, a cloud passes by outside your window? Well, then you can have a remote controlled smart bulb that can adjust different levels of brightness. So there's an order here, right? From light bulb to to、uh, like the need for different functions, and then to the functions of the new smart bulb.、Uh, you. Think about what you want to describe and how logically the parts could be ordered.、Uh, there's not one single logic or one single order for the parts of what you want to describe. There are many different ways in which you can order your parts.、Uh, so you know you can even like take out some index cards or、uh, virtual index cards, and uh, you know uh, rearrange the parts until you feel like they. Come in some kind of logical order,、uh, and if your order is correct, your reader will have no problem understanding or having an idea of what you want to describe. After you finish describing the thing,、uh, you have to conclude the essay. You can't just say, uh, uh, like you know, for the light bulb, and then you can use your phone to adjust it remotely. And essay. You can't end your essay there. It's too abrupt. The reader expects you to slowly put them down after picking them up to describe it,、uh, the thing. So, how do you conclude a description essay? Think about why the description is important. Why is this thing important? In other words, how is the reader changed by having read your description? For the smart bulb, the obvious answer would be. Well, now if you have these、uh, needs yourself, you know what to buy in order to satisfy those needs. Or for the memory of the 18th birthday, it would be like、uh, your conclusion would be like、uh, after reading it,、uh, your reader would now have、uh, another 18th birthday experience to compare their own with, and so you can make like a general conclusion about how we in our culture celebrate 18th birthdays. Uh, or you can also like make a, a comparative conclusion,、uh, like so. You know, maybe this the way I'm celebrating. I celebrated my birthday is different from how you did it. But what's important is that we recognize the importance of、uh, the 18th birthday, something like that. Or you can do a you know, in, if your reader, if you expect your reader has not yet had this experience,、uh, you can、uh, provide like a. An anticipatory, 预想式的 conclusion, like uh, if uh, if for instance I write an essay about losing my dog, like my dog dying,、uh, and you're not sure if、uh, your reader has lost a pet before, but if your reader does have a pet,、uh, one day they will lose that pet, whether it's death or you're giving it away or you themselves moving out of the house or whatever. Uh, so the anticipatory ending could go something like,、um, uh, if you're lucky enough to own a pet and you enjoy being with them, uh, uh, it's inevitable that one day you will be parted from your pet,、uh, and it could be a harrowing and tragic experience. But I hope that sharing my story, sharing the description of that experience, has helped、uh, will help prepare you, even if only a little bit. For that inevitable experience, something like that, or you know, maybe、uh, when when you lose your pet, it will be a happy and peaceful, or、well, not happy, peaceful and tranquil, like、uh, you know, death in in their sleep or whatever, and and、uh, so maybe you, hopefully your experience will not be as tragic and and heartbreaking as mine, something like that. Um, and so the point being. How is your reader different after having read your description essay? And those are the key elements of a description essay.、Uh, I make it sound simple and quick, but each element、uh, you should develop. I、uh, devote a lot of time thinking about.、Uh, and if you're clear on all of these elements, your essay will not be too shabby. Here are some example essays of、uh, descriptions that you can check out.
From our own textbook on page 333, there's a student essay. On page 337, there's a professional essay. I actually personally prefer the student essay better. Um, but they're both worth checking out. And there are a few that I myself like, uh, I have read over the years that I think are good description essays. Uh, the first one is Brian Doyle's His Last Game. Uh, this essay is preceded by a, an editor's note which spoils the essay. And so I suggest you skip the beginning editor's note, read it after finishing the essay. Um, another one is Aaron Calabria's Did the Water. And this is a pretty interesting essay because it describes a moment in time. Uh, and uh, so that's worth reading. It's not too long. You can read it quickly. The last one is a classic essay called Total Eclipse by Annie Dillard. Uh, and it's a pretty long essay that describes the experience of, uh, of, of observing a total eclipse. And you might think, oh, it's just, you know, the sun disappears. That's not too bad. Uh, no, it's totally, that's the objective part. The subjective part is what this essay is mostly about. Um, so th these are just a few examples you can check out. Okay, let me explain what the second half of this course will look like. This is our Moodle page. This is the beginning of the description part of our Moodle page. That's my email. Uh, your grade for this half will be determined mostly by the final draft of your description essay. So the previous drafts I will not grade. I will only grade your final draft. So, you know, feel free to go crazy, make mistakes, try things out. Um, it's all good. 10% uh, will be based on your participation in peer review. And I'll talk about that a bit later. And the final 10% will be based on the presentation you give at the end of the semester about your growth as a writer of description essays. Uh, okay, let's go into detail for each of these. Essay, a descriptive essay of at most 600 words. So you can go under 600, you can write exactly 600, excluding the title, uh, if you have a title. Or, uh, but you cannot exceed 600 uh, for the, the content of your essay. Uh, it does not include the title. Peer review participation. Uh, we will have one peer review session on uh, the first week of May. And uh, your participation in that peer review will decide, uh, your group members will also give a grade for your level of participation in peer review. Uh, your peer review grade will not be a direct average of the grade that everyone else gives you. I will look at their evaluations and I will consider what I believe is a fair grade to give you. Uh, so ultimately the grade is up to me. Uh, but please do participate. And finally, a presentation near the end of the semester on the development of, uh, well, Professor Liang and I are still talking, but it should be on the development of at least your description essay this semester in your personal development as a writer, not just how your writer ha writing has improved, but also how you have improved as someone who thinks about writing or prepares to write as a writer, basically. And you can also talk about some remaining unresolved questions that you may have. And, in, and uh, you know, I or Professor Liang uh, may continue to help you resolve those questions and respond to your presentation. Now, because this uh, presentation is about your entire experience uh, in uh, this course as a writer, or at least for the description part, uh, I suggest that you document your thought processes, your drafts, the feedback that you get, every part and every stage of writing a description essay. Uh, and you can collect all that information to create a portfolio. And that way you will have material you can use to create your presentation. And I'll give you more details about the presentation as 
the date approaches. Let's look at the schedule. First week of description, uh, introduction, and brainstorming. Introduction is this lecture you're listening to. Brainstorming means you should uh, begin thinking about what you want to write and how to write it. And you should actually have a first draft before, uh, let's say, the following Wednesday. So, April 28th. Is that right? 24 to minus 6, 27, 29. Why do the dates not look right? Okay, but anyways, by the following Wednesday. Uh, when that time comes, don't submit your first draft to me or to Moodle or the, to the professor. Uh, to Professor Down, submit your first draft to your group members, and I'll show you your groups uh, later. Um, because the following week in class, hopefully in the physical classroom, uh, but if not, we can also do this virtually. But in class, uh, you will talk about your essays with your group members, and so. Wednesday, you submit your first draft uh, to your group members. Your group members also submit their first drafts to you. And you read all of your group members' essays before class on Friday, so that on Friday, you have something, you know what you want to say about uh, your group members' essays. And I'll, I'll give you more detail about how to do peer review uh, uh, after introducing the rest of this semester because it'll take a bit longer. Now, if you look at this schedule, uh, you'll notice that there are two kinds of groups, A, B, C, and 1, 2. Uh, mostly this is because uh, the number of day weeks we have is a, is a very weird number. Um, but regardless, uh, you will be a member of group A, B, and C, or A, B, or C, and 1 or 2. So you will have two group uh, organizations. And uh, so this guarantees that you will have two conferences with me, one-on-one. -on -one. And we will discuss your, uh, starting from the second draft. After the peer review, go back, revise, uh, and then we will discuss your second draft uh, on either the third, fourth, or fifth week. And then you go back and revise, and we will discuss, you and I, we will discuss your third draft in week uh, six or seven. And then week eight and nine are for presentations. So you will revise once according to your peers and twice according to me. And then that will be your final draft. Uh, and as you can see, here are your groups. Let's take a look. Uh, it's very similar to the division you had with uh, Professor Liang. Um, I adjusted a few names and a few groupings. Uh, so basically, uh, these are your groups. You are either group A, B, or C, and group 1 or 2. Uh, so that way you know which weeks you have to show up in class. Okay, and then the rest of the Moodle page is uh, submitting things. Uh, first, uh, after the peer review, peer review in week two, you will have to submit a peer review evaluation sheet. I will upload that a bit later. Uh, so you can download it from Moodle and fill it out and then uh, submit it here. Uh, and based on these evaluation sheets, I will give you a peer review grade. Now, how uh, to grade your group members' uh, level of participation from 1, barely participated, to 5, fully participated, uh, and if someone has disappeared off the face of the earth, you can't contact them, they don't reply, they're a ghost, you can give them a 0. Uh, don't score yourself, obviously. Uh, and uh, I will, this is on the level of participation. I will show you a bit later how to do the actual peer review. Uh, and then after that, you have the space for uploading second drafts here. 
And then after that, you have the space for uploading third drafts here. And then after that, you have the space for uploading final drafts here. Uh, you can't see this graders only part. I only, uh, Professor Dang and I can see that. Don't worry about it. Nothing, uh, no conspiracy is happening, so don't worry about that. Um, okay, and then now I will show you how to do peer review. Okay, these are some peer review guidelines I wrote for a different composition course that I'm teaching. It's kind of, I'll give you a, I'll post a copy on our own course page a bit later. Uh, and it's a bit long, uh, so let's dive in. Uh, make sure you have you know when you're supposed to submit your essays to your group members. Um, I suggest Wednesday, but exactly when on Wednesday, or even you know if you want earlier or even later if you want, is up to you and your group members. Um, and uh, so you should take into account two factors. One, how much time do you need to read your group members' essays? Because you're supposed to read them before coming to class. So you have to leave enough time to do that. Secondly, uh, how long do you need to write the first draft of your own essay? Uh, and that brings us to the second point. If you don't finish your own draft before the deadline, uh, include the, what the rest of the essay will look like in the draft so that your group members know what to expect and so that they can give you ideas uh, or suggestions about the design of the rest of your essay. Um, but you guys are writing only six, around 600 words, uh, so I don't expect you to have an unfinished part. But if you do, uh, even if you have parts that are unfinished, describe them, sketch them, outline them, in your draft at the end. Three, uh, when you read your group members' draft, essay drafts, don't focus on mistakes like you know grammar and spelling. Instead, think about uh, your experience as a reader. What parts are confusing? Don't make sense. Uh, what parts do you not understand? What parts are successful descriptions and what parts are unsuccessful descriptions? Uh, your role as a peer review reader is to, to uh, be the first reader of the author's essay. Because when you write your own essay, there, you know what you're describing, but your, you, your reader does not know. So there may be blind spots in your description. And so your role as a peer review reader is to tell the author about those blind spots. Uh, and it's not to correct spelling or grammar, unless, of course, the spelling or grammar makes things confusing, in which case, you know, you can uh, bring it up in the discussion. Four. Uh, in class, when you actually do the peer review, please go in a strict order. And this is because you have four or five people in a group, and you have four or five essays that everyone should be discussing. And so if you don't have a strict order, it will devolve into a free-for-all conversation and argument and debate, and nothing will be settled, and uh, people will be left out, and you will have not done a good peer review. So here's how to do an orderly, successful peer review. Go person by person, essay by essay. So if, uh, let's say you have four people in your group. Start with the first person's essay, uh, and for that essay, the second person gives feedback with no interruptions, which means the author also should not respond. Uh, it's, in this part, it's one direction. Uh, after the second person gives their feedback, the third person gives their feedback also with no interruptions. Uh, and then the fourth person gives their feedback with no interruptions. After receiving all of the feedback, then the author can respond if they want to. Uh, you don't have to respond as an author. Uh, uh, and um, remember that the goal is to avoid a conversation. You want a, an orderly, efficient exchange of information. Uh, and you might be thinking, but what if I don't understand their feedback? Uh, what if it takes a conversation to really get it? Well, then after 
uh, hearing everyone's feedback, then you can begin a more detailed conversation about those points. Uh, and now when you're describing or when you're uh, discussing someone's essay, try not to focus on whether uh, it's a, it really happened like that or if the memory is a real memory exactly as it is described or whatever. Um, because the point is the, how effective the description essay is, not how true to life it is. Uh, and if you talk about you know, how real is it, did that really happen, the discussion can get kind of awkward. Uh, because sometimes essay topics about, are about very personal, uh, even vulnerable subjects. So, you know, don't be that guy. Don't make things awkward. Stick to the essay and how effective the essay is uh, instead of, you know, interrogating the author about how real it is. Point six, uh, remember that the reader's experience is always right. Which means if there's something they don't understand, you have to make the essay clearer so that they understand it without your explaining. And when you write an essay and you send it out into the world, you can't follow each essay into the reader's hands and explain every question that the reader has. You have to put all of that into the essay. So even if it's something that you can clear up with only one or two sentences of discussion, it still means that there's something you have to fix or make more clear in your own essay. And that's what I mean by the reader's experience is always right. But notice I said the reader's experience, not the reader's suggestions. The reader is always right in whether how they feel about your essay and how confused or clear they are about it. But the way to fix it is always up to the author. The reader can give suggestions, of course, can give advice, and sometimes different readers will give contradictory advice. And so it's up to you as the author to think about how to solve a problem uh, that the reader has pointed out. So when the reader points out a problem, the problem always exists. Uh, but it's always up to the author to solve that problem. Uh, so next week during peer review, if you finish early, you can stay and discuss further. You can begin revising your essay right there in the classroom, or you can leave early if you want to. Uh, and then before the following week, uh, download the peer review evaluation sheet that I will soon upload to Moodle. Fill it out, uh, submit it to the space that I just showed you in the uh, last section, previous section of this lecture. Uh, and then um, submit your second draft after peer review revisions to Moodle according to your group's deadline so that I'll have enough time to market and prepare for our own individual discussions. Okay, that's it. Uh, that's the lecture. If you have questions, feel free always to write me an email and ask me. Um, if there's something you didn't understand about this lecture, jump back and listen a few more times. or And then think about whether you want to write me an email and ask me. Uh, if you need a way to contact your group members, uh, also write to me. Uh, because, you know, the first week is, uh, you, you may not have a chance to meet your group members uh, before peer review week. So you'll need a way to contact them and submit, exchange essays with them. So if you need contact information, you can write to me and ask for that. Uh, and of course, our textbook has a whole unit on description if you want more guidance. Uh, and that's what I based this lecture on. Uh, so you can consider reading that as well. Um, that's it. Uh, see you on in the first week of May. Good luck.